Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. I recently experimented with a photograph in resin to make this casting and I showed it on my Facebook page and everybody was saying oh please do a tutorial to show us some more detail on how you did this and I didn't want to make the same thing again because I don't do that, I never make the same thing twice and so I've decided to make a memorial pyramid so it's basically this kind of thing but in a pyramid shape with lots more detail underneath so in today's video you're going to be seeing me do something just like this but as a memorial pyramid for my lovely dad I hope you enjoy the video <laughs> Here's the photo I'm going to be using in today's pyramid. It's a photograph of my dad when he was a very young man and it really shows the creative side of him. He was an engineer, an artist, a carpenter, you name it, he would put his hand to it. And here he is making a model with some nuts and bolts and he's welding them together and I think that one was... Um, a sportsman with a javelin that he was making I think I'm not sure I was asking my mum if she could remember <laughs> but yeah he used to make these wonderful um, pieces of artwork with his um, old nuts and bolts that he'd collected and so my artwork today is going to reflect that and it's going to include some of my dad's old um screws and nails and nuts and bolts that he had in left over in his garage. So this photograph is going to be immersed in resin and that raises quite a few questions. So I'm going to address the photograph situation before we get started. I'm going to be printing my photograph onto transparency film. There are two reasons for that. One reason is because when it's on transparency film, you can see the image from whichever angle you look at the pyramid. If I used photograph paper, it would be white on the back and I didn't want that. The other reason I like to use transparency film is because it gives it a really magical effect. As you can see in this project you're looking at now, which is a previous one I made, it kind of makes it look, it's like a misty effect. And because this is a memorial pyramid and it's a photograph of someone that's no longer with us in body, he's still with us in, well, I believe he's still with me. I feel him near me all the time when I'm working. He's still with us. So the the misty effect shows in in my mind it shows that he's with us but not with us if that makes any sense to you but that's why i like to use the transparency film for something like this so we've discussed what we're going to print it onto but the next question and the most important one is what are we printing with now I have two printers. I have an inkjet printer, which is my colour printer, but I also have a laser printer and my laser printer only does monochrome. I couldn't afford a colour one. I would love a colour one, but anyway, <laughs> my laser printer is monochrome. So luckily, because my photograph today is a black and white photo, I could use my laser printer. Now, in my opinion, laser printers are the best thing to use when you're using epoxy resin. And the reason for that is because the image won't bleed. Um, laser printers use toner and inkjet printers use ink. So ink from inkjet printers will bleed if you don't seal it. And with laser printers, because it's a powder which is heat sealed onto the media that you're using, it won't bleed at all. So that's why I like to use laser printers when I'm using resin. However, 
If you haven't got a laser printer, it's not the end of the world. You can use your inkjet printer, but what I would suggest you do is laminate the photograph when it's printed and make sure that you leave an edge around the image that you've laminated before when you cut it out so it's completely sealed. Your other option is to take your photograph to a shop where they have a photocopier or printer for the public to use and you just pay for however many copies you want and those ones are usually ones that use toner so and they're usually colour as well so you could get your colour image printed with toner and you wouldn't need to seal it. Right let's get started. I've printed out my photograph and as you can see, I already had it as a triangle cut to, uh, made to size on my computer before I printed. But you don't need to do that if you're not really into um, computers and you don't know how to use all the software. Just print it out. As long as it's the right size, you can print it out and make a template of the triangle so you know it's going to fit inside your pyramid and then just cut or draw around your template. You can do it either way. I'm cutting close to the photograph on the two sides, but I'm going to leave about a centimetre at the bottom so I can hold the photograph when I'm positioning it in the resin and it just makes it a lot easier if you've got something to hold and you don't have to put your fingers into the resin. The pyramid mould which I'm using is a 15 by 15 centimetre one, so that's about 6 inches by 6 inches. It has a frame and then you put your silicon pyramid into the frame. Before filming I did measure how much resin I would need by marking the side of the pyramid and filling it with water up to where the top of the um, photograph would be. Before you start pouring your resin, the first thing you need to do is make sure your pyramid mould is completely level. Out of everything you're going to learn today, I would say that that is the most important part to make your mould level. Otherwise, you're going to get wonky lines, when, especially when you get right up to the top layer, you're going to start seeing that it's uneven and it will really... You'll, it will be really noticeable in your pyramid that the um, layers are not level. So please make sure you level your pyramid. Right, I've mixed up my resin and for this top layer, because it's deep, I'm using a deep casting resin, which is called Epoxy Table by Resin Pro. And so I've mixed that up and poured some of it in. And now I'm going to add my photograph. When it comes to the image placement, you do have two options. As you can see here, I'm doing mine diagonally. And the reason I decided to do that is because it fits really well and gets held in position by the edges of the pyramid, the corners of the pyramid. If you did it the other way so that it's more... It's hard to explain. You know what I mean. If you twist it so that the edges of the photograph are in the middle of the face of one of the faces of the pyramid. You could do that, but and it would probably look better in the finished piece, but I like doing it diagonally like this because it gets held in position by the shape of the pyramid, really. Also, the other benefit from doing it the way I'm doing it is the corners of the pyramid kind of disguise the edge of the image. It doesn't really stand out because it's hidden within the corners of the pyramid. And if you did it the other way, you twisted it and had it in the middle, you would see the edge of your photograph down the face of the pyramid. I'm really hoping this is making sense to you. It's really hard to explain. Anyway, once it's in position and you've made sure it's nice and straight and even, you can put the rest of your resin in. I actually 
you'll see at the end, <laughs> put a little bit too much resin in. It's kind of hard to see when you're pouring it in that you've reached the bottom of the image or the top of the image. And yeah, I went a little bit too far, but it was still okay. Just be careful with that part. Deep casting resin takes a lot longer to cure and so this is two days later. I needed to make sure it was completely cured and it is now. So that little extra bit that I had from the photograph so I could hold it and position it, I'm taking it off now. You wouldn't necessarily need to but I did. I got a knife and I just sliced it away. Just be careful you don't cut your silicon mould when you get close to it. Right, for this layer and for all the layers coming next, I'm using Resin Pro Transparent Resin, which is a more regular resin. You don't need to stick with the deep casting. And I've mixed it up and I'm using some white holographic glitter, which is also from Resin Pro. I will put all the links in my description to this video. I was so glad I used this glitter. At the end, you will see that it has a really amazing effect having the glitter on that first layer because it kind of reflects up into the top of the pyramid and makes it look like there's glitter in that clear part when there actually isn't. So the, the clear part looks glittery, but it's not. Does that make sense? <laughs> If you put glitter in that clear part, it would distort the photograph and you wouldn't be able to see it as well. But by putting it on this layer underneath the clear layer, it reflects upwards and it all looks glittery without being glittery. <laughs> I swear my catchphrase phrase should be, does that make sense? <laughs> it must be the thing I say most in my videos. I hope. Okay, so the glittery layer is, has cured and now we're on to the next layer. This is going to be a lamp and so I need a cavity in the middle to put my lights and I'm using battery powered lights so it needs space for the battery pack as well. Normally, if I wasn't recall, if I wasn't filming this, I would use a silicon mould on the inside. I've got a um, pink cube silicon mould and that works really well by just placing that in and doing the next layers with that mould in. The problem is you wouldn't be able to see what I was doing. So, because I wanted you to be able to see what I was doing, I've just made this little um, frame out of acrylic sheet or plexiglass. And all it is, is four rectangles stuck together to make that box. Um, so that works really, really well and it is an alternative to using the cube mould. And actually, I was glad I did it in the end because I was able to do something a bit different. So the purpose of this layer is to hold that frame in place, but it does have another purpose too. Here, I'm adding crushed glass in the middle and it's like a whitish coloured crushed glass. It's not completely transparent. And the reason I put that there was to diffuse the light when it's all finished so that the light doesn't shine up too brightly into the top of the pyramid. I wanted to diffuse it a little bit. And that's why I'm adding the glass in the middle. I'm just taking out some mucky bits of glass that were in there. <laughs> and around the outside, I'm going to use some grey uh, gravel. It's terrarium gravel. And I wanted to put that around the outside so that you got a nice um, contrast between the glittery layer and the next layer. And also it kind of reflects the strength of, obviously this is a memorial pyramid and everything about it is something to do with my dad. And my dad was a really strong person. And so I thought the grey stones would really signify that strength that my dad had. After about six hours the stone layer was cured and the time it takes for curing does depend on which resin you're using and the environment that you're in because the heat does play a part too. 
So in this one, I'm using lots of nuts and bolts and screws and all kinds of interesting things I found that my dad had organised in all these different boxes and I've been going through the boxes and finding what would look good in this layer. So I'm pouring the resin in again and I'm just going to add the nuts and bolts to the resin. I could have put them in first but I felt that the the more likely to get properly covered with resin if I put the resin in first so that's the way I chose to do it. I was quite methodical about the way I added these. You could just pour them in, it's your choice. But I kind of wanted to think quite carefully about the placement of them. And so I used my tweezers and a lot of them I did position in specific places so that I had an even distribution of certain things. Um, there were those nails that I had that were like, the, I think the copper and I just thought they looked so good. They looked really old fashioned and I loved those. So I wanted to make sure I had one of those on each side. You might have noticed that I haven't used a torch to get rid of any of my bubbles. And that's because I do use a pressure pot now for things like this. And it does work brilliantly at getting rid of any bubbles that would otherwise have been there. So if you don't have a pressure pot, you you could use the torch, a, a kitchen torch or a heat gun, but do be careful because it can damage your mould. Okay, so that layer cured and we're on to the final layer and it's getting quite exciting now. I can't wait to show you the finished result, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. What I have here is my resin, which I've mixed the same one as before, the Resin Pro Transparent. And I've done half of it uh, with some silver pigment powder from also from Resin Pro, there it is. And some charcoal grey mica powder from Arteza. And all I'm going to do is put the silver in first and the black on top. And the hope, well, the reason for doing that is that I'm hoping it will they'll merge together and you'll kind of see them merging together from the side when the pyramid's demolded. That's the plan. Anyway, let's see what happens. Right, the end is in sight. We're nearly there. That layer is cured. And I did discover that my acrylic sheet um, barrier that I made for the inside wasn't quite as level as I thought it was and so it, it is um, protruding from the top a little bit and here you can just see me sanding it down to make everything level. Right so we need to add the cover for the battery compartment and here I've made a black cover and all it is is acrylic sheet again the clear acrylic sheet and I sprayed one side of it black and then on the other side it looks still really shiny and that's the outside I'll put the painted side on the inside so it doesn't get scratched off and I think it gives it a really nice finish and I'm going to attach it with these turn pins I think that's what they're called turn pins or turn buttons something like that it's what they use in picture framing to hold the back into place and you can just twist them so I'm going to drill four pilot holes into my pyramid and then add the turn buttons or turn pins and that's another reason why I made my bottom layer black so that you couldn't see through it and you couldn't see the screws in that bottom layer and it also was to hide the battery pack as well. In most of my pyramids, the bottom layer of the pyramid or the top layer, whichever way you want to think about it, is dark to hide the battery pack. Once that was done, it was time to add the fairy lights. The fairy lights I like to use are remote controlled ones so that you can easily turn them on and off without having to open up the bottom to get into the compartment to switch it on which is a bit of a, a bit of a nightmare to be doing that every time you don't want to do that so these remote control ones work perfectly 
Next, I added some rubber feet to protect my tabletop and it was finished and ready to demold. That's the exciting bit. I was quite excited about this one. I always get a little bit nervous when I'm demolding a pyramid because in the past, sometimes the silicon has stuck to the pyramid. It's kind of fused where it's overheated in certain places. And um, because of that, I still get a little bit nervous. But now that I use a pressure pot, that doesn't seem to happen and it's just come off beautifully. And from the angle that I'm filming from, you can't quite get a good um, look at how the photo looks. But you'll see in a moment, if you just hang on, I videoed it from a better angle and you'll get a really good look at it. I love how those nuts and bolts have come out. I think they look great. And I think it makes the whole thing look personal to my dad. Um, it's all just about him. And that's the good thing. With memorial pyramids, you can choose whatever that person loved or items that they had, the favourite flowers. You know, you use your imagination and you can come up with all kinds of ideas. Right, I just wanted to quickly show you it in the daylight before I show you it on the turntable with the lights off. I just wanted to show, you know, I spoke about how that glitter reflects up on the inside of the pyramid. Well, that's what I wanted to show you. So if you look at the top of the pyramid in a moment, when it just scrolls up, you'll see how all the colours kind of illuminate around my dad's head, which I really love. Do you see all those sparkles? And that's just the reflection from that base, that flat layer of glitter and there's no glitter in that blank part I just really love that so yeah let's have a look at it then so earlier on in the video I was talking about the placement of the photograph and saying that it's much easier to do it diagonally and it is because it gets held into position it would be hard to do it parallel to the face of the pyramid because There'd be nothing for it to hold on to and it would droop about and sag. But it wouldn't be impossible. There is a way of doing it. And I could explore that further in another video because, you know, I would like to see how the photograph would look if it was placed parallel to one of the faces for a more symmetrical look. Because placing it the way I've placed it, I really do like it at that angle. It, it kind of plays all kinds of tricks on you. Um, but I'm just not completely convinced about that. I don't know. What do you think? I'd love to know what you think, whether it would look better if I twisted it and had it straight facing one of the faces. I really don't know. But anyway, here it is with the lights off. And yeah, I don't really need to say anything about that. I think, it, you know, it speaks for itself. Let me know in the comments what you think. So that brings us to the end of the video. I really hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial and I would love to know what you think. As always, leave me a comments. And if you haven't already liked and subscribed, please do. It helps me so much. I'm trying to get to 20,000 subscribers and I'm so close. Hopefully this video will get me there. I will see you again soon. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.